We gotta get our laughs out now because we're not gonna be laughing. No. Here in just a few minutes. I mean, we no. find a way. Uh, we always find whether a way. It, whether appropriate or not, we Life find finds a way. way. There's something in there that are good and laughable parts. There's laughable parts in this? Oh, yeah. You think? When it comes to the father-in-law? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's not laughable. That's real creepy. It, you know what? Well, some of the stuff is laughable. How about how about we tell them all about it? So, welcome back to Fives Crowd, everybody. Hello. Here you are with me, your host for the night, Cameron. We got Chris, Austin, hey. Tony, and Zach. Hola. Oh, hopefully you know us. If you don't... You're going to get to. <laughs> you, you have the opportunity to learn about us real well. This is now your chance. <laughs> it's a dating show. Also, if you learn something no, good not. about <laughs> us tonight, you got to hit the like button. You got to. Simple you as know? that. If you, li- if you want to wanna stick around and learn more about us, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. Stick with us. This is going to be a little bit of a darker podcast, but we have a lot of fun, lighthearted ones for you if you're in the mood for that as well. We're kind of multifaceted. I like it. <laughs> Multifaceted? We do a lot. <laughs> what you say? We have many different... <laughs> that's for another podcast. Levels of hardness that's, here. That's for Ask Men in Volume 4. <laughs> but before we get too far into this, I do want to make a quick disclaimer. This podcast is going to discuss elements of domestic abuse and domestic violence, criminal behavior, and some adult themes. So... It may not be marked as explicit, but do take caution when listening and, you know, be advised if you're letting children listen or anything like that. That was very well done, Cam. Thank you. That's That's great. Great. That sounded like a team. I, 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 I even wrote it down. I wrote it down, guys. Wow. I was That's like, a, this is a great idea. That's a, I, incredible. I, no, wow, that made it sound professional. <laughs> Crap, now we got a bar. That's because it sounds uh, like... Uh, I took a note from somewhere, let's just say. Yeah. Um, But also, (laughs) on to to current events. Not word for word, I I mixed it up. Uh, Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen... (laughs) I don't know if any of you have seen... Uh, there's a, there's a couple dudes out here called the diesel brothers. You yeah. guys heard of them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have like a discovery show about building really cool trucks and stuff. I think they but, started out on YouTube actually. Didn't they? I don't know because they like, they might've anyways, but they do have a vlog and recent, recently they started to, uh, a little, uh, expedition into the West desert of Utah to look down a mine shaft. They found that was very peculiar that they thought could possibly hold the remains of one Susan Powell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if any of you guys have heard of the Susan Powell story. It was kind of a, a nationwide phenomenon that happened again right here in our backyard, right here in Utah. Um, it's a very tragic story, and it's almost it's been over thirteen years. Yeah. And it still has not fully come to a conclusion. Nope. No. Technically, the case is, is a cold case, but it's still open because no, no remains of Susan Powell have been found. She went missing. This is the short, short version. She went missing. Nobody knows who did it or where. There's a lot of speculation as to who did it, and we'll get into that. But what we'll do for you right now is we're going to lay out a timeline, kind of take it back and explain what this is, what the story is, what happened and kind of where that puts us now to where they're looking for her body in a mine shaft. It's going to be wild. Okay. Wow. Do you guys know the story? Yes. You do? Sort I do of. not. Sort I, of a little bit. You know of it though. Yeah. You know of it. Of I remember it. hearing about it. Mm-hmm. I remember some details here and there, but yeah. Yeah. Another quick disclaimer. We are by no means professional reporters. At all. Or journalists. <laughs> At all. Okay. Or investigators. I mean, when I hear cold case, I just think of a case of beer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Could be anything, so, you know. Mountain, Mountain, Mountain Dew. Back. Mountain Dew. Cold case. Cold okay. case. Cold Mountain case Dew. of b- soda. <laughs> <laughs> but a, what we are soda. is a group of dudes with thoughts and opinions, and we like to share them with each other and with you guys. Yes. So we go through what we find on the internet, like most people. Mm-hmm. We may get things wrong. Forgive us. We're just here to discuss no, please. our thoughts and feelings. Leave a comment. Tear us down. <laughs> tell us how we're wrong and you're right because that's what we like to see. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, you know what? I am open to good criticism. Oh, yes. Of you course. Know? And if we are wrong, it doesn't hurt to correct us. So, And I will yeah. say, if you do want to hear some really, really in-depth, incredible reporting on this story, 
Check out the Cold Podcast. I'm glad you mentioned that. Fantastic. Say, yeah. It's what it, we did a lot of our research on. Yeah, yeah, it's there's 18 episodes of the first season, and then he did an additional like six episodes after the fact, like a year afterwards. See, and I thought there were four. No, <laughs> hold up, on yeah. just this, yeah. just this case. There's it's like 22 oh. episodes, and this Holy guy, dang. it goes insanely. Well, detailed. season two he, is a different case. Yeah, season two is a different yeah. one, but season one is all about uh, Susan Powell. Yep. And this, you want to talk about twists and turns and, you know, we're not going to be able to get into all of it tonight, but if you want to hear a lot about this story, go listen to this yeah. that cold podcast. Amazing. Really? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You, oh good. my goodness. Wow. Yeah. It's, mm. it's awesome. Yeah. And it, what it is, is it's because this guy is a reporter and he... He's an investigational He's an investigation. journalist. Okay, sure. Let's give him his due, okay? <laughs> My bad. Uh, but he essentially... <laughs> Unlike us. <laughs> He's, he, uh, uh, who are commentators. After a certain amount of time, documents from cases like this can become public record. Yes. Mm. And so he, once they were available for public record, they decided, like, on the side of doing his normal job, like, hey, I'm going to request all these files and go through them ourselves, and we're going to create, you know, this timeline, this podcast. But they went through hundreds and hundreds of hours of, like, journals and audio journals, video journals, mm -hmm. written journals. Like, he interviews a lot uh, of the main people in the growing case. Growing up, I was always told <clears throat> to journal. And, like, these people actually did it, but they are... Not good. <laughs> <laughs> they teach you a big old book of what not to do. It's like uh -huh. what not to write down or record. <laughs> oh, geez. Wow. It's pretty wild. Like it was eye opening to say the least. Yes. So well, let's jump into the timeline. We'll kind of lay out everything that happened. Mm. Then we'll go back and we'll kind of discuss, maybe fill in some spots. We might have missed something. Um, just to, to, to give myself a little protection. I am reading straight from the Salt Lake Tribune's timeline. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Blame them. I'm not, them. Yeah, I'm not, not bitter. With the, blame, blame them. them. <laughs> <laughs> We're not bitter, guys. We're not. We love you guys. All right. So. Out of screen. Huh? It's kind of out of screen. Let's readjust. Oh, I didn't. Huh? Should we adjust a little bit? Oh, it's just because he's leaning there. out. He's, he's, he's in. Sit back. Oh. Yeah, he's good. All right. Sometimes good. I want to disappear. I just like, we just That's Later. how me and Cam right. do it. We just go in and just out. That's how we sneak away. Just in trying to be in and out. unique <laughs> New York. Unique in and out. New York. In and out. All right. So this story, kind of, it starts actually farther back, mm. but the, kind of the important stuff starts around 2007, okay? Uh, Susan Powell and her husband, Josh Powell, file for bankruptcy with nearly $200,000 in debt. Wow. Jeez. Now, is that a mortgage? No. No questions. No. Oh. Nope. Um, <laughs> in June 28th of 2008, Susan Powell addresses a letter to her family and friends, which said her husband had threatened her and she feared for her life. The letter said Josh Powell threatened to destroy her if she divorced him Jeez. and warned that if she dies, it may not be an accident, even if it looks like one. Mm -hmm. She crap. kept the letter in a safety deposit box, which only she could access. Okay. Oh, okay. Already things, things ramping up <laughs> in December 6th of 2009. A friend visits Susan Powell and Josh Powell at their home for lunch. According to her friend, Susan was behaving normally at the time and only said she was tired and wanted to nap before dinner. Okay, so she was hanging out with some friends, acting completely normal, but then she was like, you know what, I'm tired. I want to I want to go take a nap. Correction. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> this has to do with the timeline. <laughs> Continue. I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> she had just had dinner. Josh, Josh had given them dinner, lunch. her and her friend, lunch. or lunch. Sorry, lunch. whatever. So then there and was then, no correction. And then, no, you said she, before she ate dinner, she started feeling tired. Yeah. No, she was going to. She had lunch. It, yeah, she, she had, had lunch, wanted to take a nap before dinner. There, dinner, dinner comes after lunch. Touche. <laughs> her friend, do you say her friend came over? Uh-huh. The one, they're untangling yarn or whatever, that one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just making sure I'm in the right Sorry, spot. Sorry, go ahead. Can I continue My bad. now? Go ahead. I heard you wrong. My bad. <laughs> I've heard arguments like this in retirement homes, guys. <laughs> Come on. Pull this, yourselves together. This is going to be awesome. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> Damn it, Charles. Go ahead. Anyways, she lies down for a nap at 5 p.m., which is after lunch, pre dinner. <laughs> Her friend leaves, and so does Josh Powell, who said he was taking his two sons sledding. 8 30 p.m., that same day, December 6th, a neighbor sees Josh Powell as he returns home and pulls into the garage. Okay. Midnight to 12 30 a.m., December 7th, Josh Powell says he left his home with his two sons, then ages two and four, to go camping at the Simpson Springs Campground about 25 miles west of Vernon in the remote west desert of Twilla County while Susan went to sleep. Strange. Also, fun fact, I've camped at that campground. Have you really? 12.30 a.m. Yeah. A.m. Yeah. You said right. Like, no, 12, midnight to 12.30 a.m. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just Will you sure. guys just listen? <laughs> yeah, use your ears, guys. Hey, this is just, is just <laughs> clarifying. Well, clarifying. I heard you. <laughs> I clarifying didn't. for yourselves? <laughs> for, the, for our listeners so they'd have nothing to backfire on. <laughs> just kidding. We try so hard. I promise We're you guys. We're horrible people. We're getting there. <laughs> I'm afraid to say anything at all. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> just just say this is when you just keep their this mouth shut you're in a fight on. with your wife and you just... Whoop, Pick you save ba- it till after. The lid. <laughs> you pick your battles. Okay. Still December 7th. Right? Mm-hmm. 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. On December 7th, the pal's daycare provider becomes alarmed when he, the couple failed to drop off their sons on schedule and she could not reach either parent by cell phone or at their home. She contacts Josh Powell's mother and sister, who call police after they could not locate the pair. Police break into the Powell's home and find no one, but notice two fans blowing on a wet spot on carpet in the home. That evening, December 7th, Josh Powell and his two sons return home between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. He is taken to West Valley Police Station to be questioned. So again, he left at midnight. To go camping and then came back the same day at five. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a giant red flag. Yeah. Right. Oh, and should we mention this during, is December and it was like wicked cold. It was during the middle of a snowstorm. They just big had a snowstorm storm too. Mm-hmm. It was a snow okay. squall. Squall, those squalls, man. Yeah. 11 squall. a.m. on December 8th, Susan's father, Chuck Cox, receives a telephone from call from Josh Powell who informs him Susan was missing and that he was about to be interviewed by the police again. December 9th, police serve a search warrant on the Powell residence and remove boxes, bags, and a computer. December 10th, law officers search the Simpson Springs area but find nothing. December 12th, Josh Powell, Chuck Cox, and other family members gather outside the LDS Church, Hunter Central Stake Center to pray, sing hymns, start a 24-hour fast in hopes for their safe return because they were members of the LDS Church. Off and on, you'll see. A tearful Josh Powell does not speak, but Chuck Cox says he's concerned about the focus on his son-in-law. That evening, Josh Powell joins an effort to hand out missing persons flyers to jazz fans attending a game. December 14th, Josh Powell hires a defense attorney, Scott C. Williams, and skips a third interview with the West Valley City Police. Okay, so it's was that December 14th? So we're a weekend. So we're a week in mm-hmm. from and, December 6th. Uh-huh. And he's starting, the police are, are, are starting to question him more. And so he lawyers up. Right. But at this point, there's no evidence to make him the, su- the prime suspect. It's pretty much like they're assuming so. Well, I mean, there's no hard physical. Yeah, evidence. There's no hard facts, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of red flags. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The only kind they have in this, this guy's house. Um, December 15th, Josh Powell provides a DNA sample to police. December 17th, West Valley City Police subpoena Salt Lake City Television Station for footage of interviews with Josh Powell taken days after his wife's disappearance. The 18th, Josh Powell and his sons travel to Puyallup, Washington to stay in the home of his father, Stephen Powell, for the holidays. December 20th, friends of the family of Susan Powell hold Vigils in Utah and Puyallup. Such a terrible name. To keep attention focused on finding her. Now we're into January 2010. Family and friends launch social media campaigns. They're looking for, you know, spreading word of disappearance on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. 
Um, the sixth, the Pal Josh Powell and his brother Michael arrive in the Powell's West Valley City home to pack the family's belongings. Friends say that Josh Powell, who has been fired from his job, may be unable to keep the home and is moving back to Puyallup. <laughs> now, now, real quick, just because I'm curious, how old is Susan Powell? Mid-20s. At this time, I think she was mid-20s. Okay. I, think they were, I know that Josh was born in the 70s. <clears throat> So I was going to say, I thought they were maybe in their they 30s. Are. Maybe they are in their 30s. Yeah. Look that up for I, me, Jamie. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, we understand. Right? <laughs> uh, fast forward a little bit, January 27th. Neighbors mm-hmm. decorate the Powell home in West Valley with dozens of purple ribbons, hearts, and signs to bring renewed attention to Susan's case. Josh returns to West Valley to make home repairs to his property to rent it. The 29th, West Valley City serve a search warrant on Josh Powell and seize the blue minivan he drove the night his wife disappeared to examine it. Is this a search warrant in Utah? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, because this was all, they lived in West Valley. So West Valley police is heading up everything. She was 27, 28. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. I, he had to be in his 30s, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll double check. <laughs> the Cox <laughs> family on February 15th holds a news conference in Puyallup. Family members allege Susan had a physical altercation with her husband and detail the couple's problems, citing controlling behavior by Josh Powell. They say Susan had suggested to friends and family that she would end the relationship by their April 6th anniversary if the relationship didn't improve. The family also announces a nonprofit organization in her name aimed at helping families of missing persons. So that's really cool. Her family's really, really cool. February 25th, neighbors of Stephen Powell, so Josh's dad, cover their Washington neighborhood with missing person posters and ribbons. The Coxes say it upsets the Powell children. So, you know, I can't even imagine at this point. We're we're months into it. Yeah. And the kids know nothing of what's going on. They don't know on. anything? No. They, they know were, nothing. Like they this, were two and four, right? That's what you said? Uh, two and five, I think. No, but they're uh, two years apart. Two and four. Two yeah, and four. two and four. That, yeah. But uh, yeah, she's been missing for months now. And th- literally, it's still at this time, nothing. That, that was one of the craziest things with this case is, is that like there was no evidence of anything. Nothing popped up for like still yes. to this day even. Like so little turned up about it. Um. Fast forward to April 10th. People are still searching in Simpson Springs area, but turn up nothing. A August 25th, West Valley police say detectives have spent at least 6,850 man hours to date searching for Susan at the cost of more than $150,000. Five of the department's 28 detectives are assigned full time to investigating her disappearance. Wow. Okay. So like that's a big chunk. Um, September 10th, Chuck Cox and Ed Smart appear in Utah as part of an effort to raise awareness for kidnapped children. Is that Elizabeth Smart's yes. dad? Yeah. Yes. No way. Yeah. Oh, dang. I didn't know that. Whoa. Yeah. That's another one we'll probably talk about one day because, again, it happened in Utah. Yeah, because <laughs> if you think about, well, yeah, Elizabeth Smart was about like five years prior to that. And I think that was the last biggest disappearance. It was, that Elizabeth Utah Smart was had. 2002. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a story so, I want to get into because the whole smart thing is just <coughs> wild from yeah. what I understand. Mm-hmm. Oh, now, yeah. real quick, just because I need a refresher, who's this Cox guy? So that's her dad. Okay, so, that's her. So, oh, so her dad. maiden name is Cox. Yes. Yeah, so we'll Got call you. it Susan Cox Powell is how they refer to her and okay, a lot okay. of stuff. So that's her dad. Um, December 6th, now a, a year has passed, mm-hmm. Josh Powell and his father Steve assert that Susan Powell ran away with missing Utah man Stephen Kocher, yeah, who yeah. disappeared in Nevada in December 2009. The Powells claim the pair ran off to Brazil, where Kocher had served an LES mission. They say the pair may have married and started a new life. July 15th, 2011, Stephen Powell says he will post portions of Susan Powell's childhood journals online. 
which is just weird why you would even do that. August 9th, a Washington judge grants Josh Powell request for a temporary restraining order against Chuck Cox following an altercation between the two at the Lowe's store. Mm -hmm. The two are are later given mutual anti-harassment orders requiring them to stay 500 feet apart. So her husband and her, and oh, for real, dude. (laughs) After everything, once we get more like deeper into the details of this stuff, I, yeah. The funny thing is they only live like four blocks away from each other too. <laughs> it's, re- yeah. In Washington. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now you guys think they, it's, it, this whole thing is like mind bending. Like it's jacked. August 9th or sorry, 18th West Valley city police say there's a break in the case and that a search will be conducted in Eli, Eli Nevada. The media are invited along to watch as investigators search abandoned mine shafts in the area, but police find nothing after two days of searching. Um, August 23rd, Jennifer Graves, Josh Powell's estranged sister, and Kiersey Hellowell, Susan Powell's best friend, alleged Steve Powell made unwanted sexual advances towards toward the missing woman, which Steve Powell denies. <laughs> August 25th, officers from Utah and Washington serve a search warrant on the Powell home in Puyallup, Washington, and remove computer towers, garbage bags, and boxes of items. In an ABC News interview, Steve Powell, the father, claims he shared father-in-law, daughter-in-law flirting with each other, maybe some sexual touching or whatever, and I enjoyed it, frankly. This this guy, <laughs> this guy is a piece of work. Wait, so now... St- Steven is saying that him and Susan had a thing? Yes. Yeah, according to him. Holy he, He's claiming <laughs> that there was some sexual tension between them and some yep. stuff going oh, there on. There is more to that. And Oof. it's, yeah, we'll get into detail. It's, well, you've it's, it's, by quite, interest. it's quite disturbing. Um, September 12th, the police begin a multi-day search for Susan Powell in a well-known rock hounding area in the West Desert near Delta in Utah. Two days later, cadaver dogs find what West Valley police describe as human remains and over several days recover about 100 pieces of charred wood for forensics analysis, saying the wood could have been used to burn a body. September 22nd, Steve Powell is arrested. You ready for this? On allegations of voyeurism and child pornography. Prosecutors said they found thousands of images of girls and women filmed without their knowledge including Susan Powell and two young girls who were former neighbors. The Powell children are placed into state custody while police investigate whether their father or anyone else living in the home knew about Steve Powell's activities. So Josh's dad, Steve, super disgusting creep. Yep. yep. <clears throat> and, you know, goes to jail for child pornography. <coughs> as one, Hopefully they told as one all should. the inmates in there. Whoa. <laughs> September 23rd, the Coxes file a third-party custody action asking that they be given custody of their daughter's sons. On the same day, a judge bars Susan Powell's husband from publishing her teenage diary entries online for at least now. Mm-hmm. On the 20th, September 27th, Washington Division of Child and Family Services files a child welfare action and temporary, temporarily places the children with Chuck and Judy Cox. September 28th, following the two-day hearing... A Pierce County Superior Court judge rules the Powell children will remain temporarily with the Coxes, uh, citing the, the pending investigation into Josh Powell. May or may not know, may that, well, sorry, <laughs> investigating into what Josh Powell may or may not have known about his father's activities. And the fact that he is a person of interest now in his wife's disappearance. And again, this is, what was this, 2010. Or 2011. This was 2011. Yeah, wow. So we're near, we're almost three years later, right? Uh, two years. Mm, two yeah. Years. We're almost into the third, third year. year. Yeah. November 10th, Chuck Cox files a motion in the third party action asking a judge to, among other things, appoint guardian ad item so a custody investigation can begin. Uh, the 14th, the judge sets a review hearing for the missing chil- mom's children for January 19th. Um, let's see here. Wow. That's yeah. a lot there. Dude, this, this investigation was huge. I'm almost wondering if we're going to have to break this up into a two parter. I don't even know if we're going to be we're, able to get through all this. We're, this is like the end of it right oh, here. Okay. So <clears throat> on February 5th, police say that Josh Powell set off an explosion at, or sorry, February 1st, a Washington judge orders the Powell sons, Charlie now seven and Braden now five mm-hmm. to remain in custody of their grandparents. 
Chuck and Judy Cox. He also orders Powell to undergo a psychosexual evaluation by a court-appointed examiner in light of explicit images found on his compu- on a computer taken from the Powell's West Valley City mm-hmm. home during a 2009 police search. Is that Steve or Josh? Josh. 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 Got so you. that's Josh's Got computer. You. And the images they found? February 5th, 2012, police say Josh Powell set off an explosion at his Washington State home Almost immediately after his sons arrived for a supervised visit, the blast killed him and the children. Yep. February 11th, Michael Powell, Josh Powell's brother, and his ardent defender commit suicide by jumping off a parking structure in Minneapolis. Hey, who was that? His, his brother, brother. His, brother. his little brother. <clears throat> May 14th to, to 16th in 2013, West Valley City search for Powell's, Susan Powell's body on property near Salem, Oregon, but find nothing. May 20th, the police hold a press conference and announce the end of their search for Susan and basically announcing that it was now a cold case. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, so Josh is dead. The two sons are gone. The whole family's gone. The father is in jail. He's, he's dead. And dies. He's, he died as well. Yeah. As well. He, he died of a heart attack in like 2018. Yeah. Heart yeah. So not too the long only, ago. The only pal left alive is the youngest daughter and wow. Jennifer. And they were the only like... G- so that that's essentially the timeline, okay? Starting in 2009, she went missing. <laughs> a lot of red flags around Josh and what he was doing. But investigators never had enough to like arrest him. To pin him, huh? Yeah. But I mean... By all accounts, he 110% did it. Mm-hmm. Did yeah. they ever get that letter out of her safe deposit yes. box? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. So that's just the, the, the skeleton of all. There is a lot of detail. Should we dig? Uh, we should start digging. I mean, going back, even mm-hmm. uh, to kind of start from the beginning, right off the bat, Josh Powell was, he's a little freak. The family. The in whole general, family. Okay. His family. Freaky. So his dad's parents were divorced when he was young and they would play these little games where they would kidnap him from each other. Kidnap all the kids. And so the so, so, so so Josh, mom and dad, Josh's, yes. Josh's so Stephen grandparents, Powell, Stephen Powell. Yep. Okay. So Stephen Powell's parents uh-huh. got divorced when he was young. Okay. Yep. And they would play these games where they would essentially, they weren't sharing custody, so they would just kidnap the kids from each other and see how long they could hide from each other. And it was a game to them. Mm. Okay? So essentially, what what I'm demonstrating with this factoid <clears throat> is that, like, emotional and, and abuse was going on in this family, yeah. you know, back a ways. For generations. Uh-huh. Yeah. This was well before Amber Alert. Exactly. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Well, anyways, growing up, uh, Josh Powell... Like things started out all right in their family. He, you know, he's got his his mom, his dad. There's a total of five children, him and his siblings. Um, but they're kind of they're off and on members of the LDS Church. Mm-hmm. Well, his mom is devout. And yes, his his and father. his dad was. His dad had served a mission and went anti. Uh huh. And then came back and started getting into stuff against the church. Yeah. So, anyways, that that put a strain on relationship. But then also like. The dad was a very, he was a very manipulative, uh, kind of emotionally abusive person. And he would, he would manipulate the kids in all kinds of ways to kind of go against their mother and cause all these issues. Long story short there, they end up getting divorced. Okay. And at this time, Josh decides to go with his dad and his sister, his older sister, Jennifer stays with the mom. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, to show you a, a little deeper view into how effed up and creepy Stephen Powell is, he has written journal talking about his attraction to his own daughter. Yep. No way. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And describing what, again, uh. is, is something that should be completely innocent, but he views it in this just perverted way. So, like, the girl, she would walk around her own house in, like, her underwear, her underwear and a shirt. And he said, in, a, in a safe place and he would look into it saying she's teasing him into a, in a perverted way saying she's teasing him. Doing no. it. He was a freak. This guy was a freak. Yeah. Oh him. my gosh. She was flaunting around teasing him is what, how he took it. He's a creep. 
Oh, man, that deep. gets my blood boiling right? instantly. Right? Yeah. That's it the was, thing is I, I've, I, again, knew a little bit about this case. I knew wow. who she was and her immediate family. I didn't know how the depth mm-hmm. of all this craziness. Cause, well, I was just going to say it was the same thing with Susan Powell when they were living with him um, before 2007. Um, she had come out and like, I guess asked him for a back rub or something yeah. like that. Like, no, he offered. It. Oh, that's right. He yeah. offered it and she he said, okay. To, and then yeah. she had sh- said that, Oh, I, I shaved my legs too. And <laughs> they're so smooth, blah, blah, blah. But he like, he took that as that back rub. Like he was like, yeah, I was caressing her. Like he has the journal about it. And he's like, I even, I even put my hands underneath her shirt and stuff like that. Like underneath the, the like sleeve. the sleeves on the yeah. side. And, and he's describing this in detail. Yeah. And he was like, I, I felt a connection there. And I know she felt the connection. Yeah. And there was, we were vibing yeah, or whatever. We were Dude, vibing. He, and he even went on to tell other people like police, all this stuff because of that one little back rub. It was like a sexually explicit thing that he they and went she was through teasing and him too. Yeah, he said it was one of the most erotic experiences of his life. Mm-hmm. Well, he goes Dude to go is a freak to tell one of the FBI officers in Washington when they're questioning him that he went for her back and then went for her feet and put her feet on his crotch just to show what she was doing to him. Like, but yeah. she didn't. Just wild, crazy guy, so, and the thing with the legs saying the legs are smooth is she was in cosmetology school so she did wax she did her first wax on her legs and she's like it's been two weeks and they're still smooth that's all that was mm-hmm. it wasn't like ooh fill my smooth and legs yeah. it is weird as and flirting takes, yeah so can i can i blow your mind even more i no. mean i don't know if i want you to but I'm, so, uh, I'm so speechless it's uh, unbelievable it's disgusting here they are 2007 uh Josh is kind of having a little frustration with his dad. He's he's go, trying to get back into the church, and he's kind of confused about what to do. And anyways, um, he starts this new job as a trucking, as a trucker or whatever, and he goes out on this thing to get trained or whatever. And so it's uh, the dad, uh, what's his, uh, Steve Powell and Susan Cox. They are in a car together, basically driving back. He's taking Getting her back alone. to the house, mm-hmm. and he's recording this on his audio on his recorder and he records her from a distance as she's walking towards the car and then before she gets in the car he hurry and puts it away but he accidentally leaves it on and so you get to hear all the voice recording literally on that drive back now I remind you this is his son's wife he confesses his love to her confesses that he wants to be with her and that they had a sexual experience with each other and all this stuff, and she creeps out, and she goes, I don't know where you're getting this from, but I and I apologize if I led you on in any way, but no, this is not going to happen, and you need to stop. I'm married to your yeah, son. Yeah, and I'm married mm-hmm. to your son. Like, how could you do this? And yeah. and uh, instead of him taking it as a, you know, oh, she denied me and all this stuff, he took it as, she's she's playing with me. She's, I need to try harder. She's toying with she's him. She's toying with me. She's she's just telling me this because playing hard to get. Yeah, it. playing hard to get. It's it's my son's wife, so she's just trying to make things sound better. Yeah. So he took that as a I need to try harder. And you can tell she's just like terrified about the uh-huh. whole thing in the, in the video with the way she's talking. She's like, "No, I'm not interested." She's like, "My dad doesn't kiss me and you always kiss me on the cheek and then that I've been meaning to talk to you that that needs to stop because it's weird and like goes over this whole thing mm-hmm. with him. He's like, come on, Susan, I, you know you feel something. I could feel you the way your energy was towards me in this. And she's like, no, no, it's not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. So now, and that's, this- that's ultimately what led them back to you, led them to Utah, mm-hmm. to their, to their, well, not current red. I'll be but, honest. I did not see any of this coming. Yeah. No, it's for disturbing, real. Man. I feel it's like I just got broadsided, man. I, I'm like expecting to talk about the missing persons and we're getting hit with this, all this crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing is when, when Holy you hear it on crap. its face, you're like, wow, this is, this is a terrible tragedy. This poor woman went missing. You're like, her husband seems kind of weird. I don't know. He, you know, he might've done it. Cause everyone always suspects the husband first, but you dig deeper into it and you go back to, through their relationship. And, and it makes, honestly, it sadly does make more sense. So, they met in Washington mm-hmm. when they were going to institute. 
So part of the LDS religion, we have a class called Institute, which is typically for like college aged people, just to, to get a deeper learning into the teachings of the gospel and all that stuff. Well, they met in this class and they go on to kind of, to, to kind of reminisce. They start to get to know each other. They talk to each other. Josh, even though he's kind of a weirdo and doesn't really have good relationships with women, he's very oddly confident in himself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like this, this dude is like kind of mind blowing. Like I imagine he's kind of, if I met him, I would just want to punch him in the face. Right. <laughs> like oh, he's I just agree. that type of person. <laughs> uh huh. Like he's he, got, he has a punchable face. He's got this, you know, those people who are like, he's narcissistic. They're weirdos yeah. Yeah. and they're narcissistic. Oh, I, yes. oh yeah. You know how we talk about that one kid that did like the flip Ty? and the Betos? Oh, JK. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But you know how we talk yeah, about that kid yeah, that did yeah. the flip? And we're, like, douche. we're like, we hate it when we, it's the worst super, kind of douche is a douche that actually has skill. Yeah. <laughs> he's the opposite yeah. of that. That dude was incredible. Well, so that's an incredible so just, douche. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, I can't even be mad. Like, well, it was impressive, but I'm mad that you are proud of it. Here's what attracted him so much to Susan, too, is because they, they get together for the first time at a party, and... She kind of stay and it's at his house Mm -hmm. and then she stays behind afterwards and kind of helps clean up and do the dishes. And he goes, I just knew at that point I was in love with her because I know she could make a wonderful housewife and she could take take care care of of me and take care of my stuff and my house. And she just was so wonderful to stay behind to to help clean up everything. I'm hearing his voice as you're saying it. I have to say Go listen to the cold podcast because yes. they actually have his audio journals yes. of him actually talking. Wow. And his voice is just gratingly annoying. Sounds like, like somebody I know who did the same oh, thing. Oh, I hate him. <laughs> Gosh, you hear his voice and you're just like, I hate yeah. you. It's wow. he's so such a he's, he's just a, like a weasley, little sniveling, little weasel. Douche. Weasel. He's weasel. a narcissistic weasel. He's like a, a sleuth. But yeah, sleuth. this kid, so growing up, he like legit thought himself the best. At everything, yeah. The, even the dumbest stuff, like even better than his own siblings, yeah. better than his parents. Like he's just like, oh, I'm the best at this. Like I'm just so amazing all the time, and he's not. And so after he starts getting yeah. to know her, she's like, hey, actually, I recognize you. You've been to my house. So years earlier, when he was in high school, he had met her sister, Mary. Pursued and her. had gone, yeah, pursued her, gone over to their house and played piano for him, right? At this time, Susan was 12 years old. And even though in that when she said that to him, he pretended he didn't remember her, in one of his journals, he talks about how he did and and how he said he's like, I know that she's she's too young. But, I mean, she is kind of cute. And, like, I think she's cute. And if if she wasn't too young, you know, I think that there might be something there. How old is he at this point? 18. 18. And she was 12. Wow. Yeah. So, boom. Red flag. Pretty much everything he ever says <laughs> is just a red flag. Everything comes out of his mouth well, in his journals. He dated Hi, my name's Josh. Red flag. <laughs> oh, Josh. <laughs> he, dated, he dated before Susan, uh, uh, Catherine, right? Is yes. It Catherine. Yeah. Uh-huh. I believe, yeah. And Catherine ended up anyway, he, he got super creepy and weird and was very controlling over her money and everything with Catherine. He ended up taking a student loan out. Well, he convinced Catherine, Catherine to, take to take out a student, student loan, loan. Yep. deposited into his bank account, and she never saw the money. And to this day, she still owes on it. Yeah. So this is the thing. Nobody knew about Catherine during the initial original yes. investigation. So I, I miss that. Who is Catherine? So it's, Catherine is the, the this girl he dated before. Former okay. girlfriend. Okay. Mm-hmm. So like not almost, not like right, right before, but pretty close. It was like pretty much one of the only girls that he really dated mm-hmm. exclusively. Pursued. Like, or pursued. You know what that reminds me of is that uh, there's that new series that's really popular on Netflix right now about the, the, the Tinder guy. You heard about this? Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. I've He's seen this, the banner for it, but I haven't watched it, it. I can't remember what the name of the the show, but basically this guy would pretend to be a multimillionaire or something, but he, he had hitmen set on him. He basically swindled these girls on Tinder, get them to fall in love with him, and then he would say that hitmen are chasing him and that he needs them to wire him money. Smart. Oh. 
And so then he, he'd get wired money and then cut ties, is from what I understand. Because he'd get shot. Yeah. By the hip man. So this is kind of like what that guy's doing, is he's had this girl take out a loan, give him the money. money and, quick, right. Huh? But All here's right. the thing Jump. is, yeah. I don't think he was smart enough to, to like con somebody. No. He would convince them to essentially give him their money. <laughs> Just and like in he, his own weird head, he thought it was like kind of his right in a way. This you know is where I, mean? I disagree with you. I honestly think the dude is pretty smart. I think I he was. He, to, he, and we'll get, I can get there later. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. I could say he probably was smart, but his downfall was that he thought he was smarter than he was. I agree. Well, and he even convinced Susan without knowing it to pay for her wedding ring. He did pay her back though. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's but still, true. I, I fully he, expected him yeah. not to. Yeah, yeah that's but true. The, I did the forget. Guy's yeah. like, he did pay her back. It was back, to get the, the discount. Yeah. But <laughs> Ka- anyway, with Catherine, when Catherine broke up with him, he <laughs> ended up, didn't he end up pursuing Catherine's little sister as well? I don't remember. I, I'm pretty sure. He, he did a couple times. So he had yeah. a history in high school, in college. And that's where I was getting of dating at. a girl. Yeah. And then pursuing her sister if it didn't work out with yeah. the first girl. <laughs> what a piece of work, man. Weird, yeah. Weird guy. Wow. But he also made a comment like that the blood was cursed. His blood was cursed or something. His blood was cursed? Yeah. Because no shit. The sins of the father. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But anyway, pulling out, pulling just, out some Catholic. Just remember scripture. that. Well placed. For, for later because I, I think it comes into play. Yeah. He. <laughs> because when he was going to church and when he was trying to get religious and everything, he did have a conscience. Like. He was always mm-hmm. conflicting in his journals. This dude had so much digital journalism going on. Like in it's all true. Of his, it's insane. It's crazy. Me. Well, and here's the craziest part his about dad. his journals. A lot of his journals actually weren't even written in an actual journal. They'd be scribbled on like napkins yeah. and envelopes and all this stuff. And he convinced Susan to scan it all into a computer. Yep. Or he would. That was he that mostly was, had her do it. Yeah. That was part of her because she worked part time, mm-hmm. and when she was not working, she was consistently scanning in stuff for him on the computer. She was working full time at the end, though. She was doing everything. everything. So basically, okay, they get to know each other. She was the breadwinner. They yeah, yeah they start falling true. in love. All this stuff. Even was the it way, love? God. Was even, it? He was in love with her at the, first, yeah. I think. The what way, about her? Was she in love with him? At first, yes. So. Yeah, yes. That's the thing, is at well, first he comes off as a, a super nice guy, like yeah. a stellar dude, and then immediately it just... That's the sad thing, though, is I think up until her disappearance, she still fully loved him. She was yeah. scared of him. She even wanted another child with him. But she never lost hope. Like, never yeah, she never hope. did lose hope in him, because she knew yeah. the real Josh, which... If you listen to this cold podcast, it really goes into really good yes. detail. And he, at one point, was a really good, decent guy. I don't think so. I think he it was a was, facade. I think it was a manipulative, yeah. I really think it was a facade. Because he would essentially, again, he... Maybe he was trying. I, was get, I think it was more towards, like, the first of their marriage. He's a monster. But I, he was... I don't know. I feel like guys like this, at least from what I'm gathering, they, they don't just change into this. I feel mm-hmm. like there's something. I mean, he's deeper. a sociopath, man. He's yeah. basically yes. a Ted yeah. Bundy. Yeah. He, yes. Sociopath. Without good looks. Sociopath and uh, narcissistic. Very nar- narcissistic. So, so I agree with Chris as far as at the beginning, maybe there was a genuine effort there that he was trying, but failed. I think. I he think you're up. right. I think he just didn't. And he was lazy. Even though he, he did. Was lazy. Even though he did love her. I don't think he felt like he needed to do much. Well, I to think, show that. I think mm. it was just an infatuation. He finally had a girl giving him attention who he asked to marry. And so he's like, oh, yeah. I love this girl. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it finally <laughs> got some attention to where he cleaned. Well, and, and he was, was he was extremely controlling. So yes. pretty much their whole relationship, he was extremely controlling. He was constantly getting into debt. Even at this time, he had like twenty thousand dollars in debt. Well, you said yeah at the beginning of this, you said two hundred thousand dollars of debt. That's when they. What that's is when that they, in? That's when they filed uh, bankruptcy. bankruptcy. And then after that point, he bragged that he's like, "Oh yeah, I got this." And I filed by bankruptcy, so I basically got it for free. All of his tools, all of his yeah, power all tools, all of his power tools, he everything. Took Susan's he credit bragged card. about how he got them for free because he just filed for bankruptcy. He took afterwards. Susan's power Good credit cards. Heavens, mm-hmm. went and bought all this stuff, and then filed for bankruptcy and got to keep it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so throughout their they relationships, didn't come, they didn't come and take it. Uh-huh. Nope. nope. 
It was a credit card, so they didn't know it was affiliated. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, how do you get 200k in debt on a credit card? It's not just on Multiple. the credit card. No, there's it was other things. Credit cards, student loans. He didn't. Um, he, he only still, had like thirty thousand in credit he still cards. Still had to pay his student loans back though too. But they still, had. You can't file. They just had a lot of student. different mm-hmm. stuff that they had. All this dead and all. Oh, one of them was he took out an ad for oh, his yeah. his uh, real estate business. Yep. He he became a realtor. See to set this up real quick. <laughs> throughout oh, their marriage, he never really held a stable job. No, no. He would always he would get a job. They even got some jobs together, and he would kind of come to a place where he's like, "Oh, this is beneath me," and he'd end up getting fired. Like essentially, he'd again yep. think he was too big for his britches, and. Uh, He'd get fired and he, or, or he'd leave and he would expect Susan to basically carry that weight. So yeah. there, were, there was a point in time when she was working full time and she was d- doing everything at home, cooking, cleaning, oh all that gosh. stuff. He wouldn't do anything. At and home. she had a kid. Wow. And so he, she even said in her own words, I feel like I'm a single mother with a roommate who doesn't do anything. Yes. Holy hell. The dude okay. was a piece of crap. All he you was ladies garbage. listening, you go up to your husbands and you thank them today. Well, unless they're <laughs> unless like they're him. Pieces yeah, of crap. unless they're like him. <laughs> and then we'll leave a phone number. On the flip side, know. exactly. <laughs> if, I mean, we haven't gotten too far into it, but at the, bo- at the end of the day, this is an abusive relationship. Yes. The power dynamic is completely off, and he is 100% taking advantage of her. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's he's expecting her to do everything while he's controlling everything she All does. The money. She can't use the car unless he lets her. She has... He cut her off from their own shared bank account. Yeah. Won't let her buy stuff, but he'll buy... Yeah. But basically, like RC cars and tools and toys oh, and all this computers. random crap. Went out one time and dropped like four hundred dollars on what was it? Like a huge propane, a that, settling that, torch, that settling torch yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, that was and for then, a reason, though. Well, yeah, but then she's at work and she's, she's eating, eating a can of chili. Yep, cans of chili yeah. they buy in bulk. She went up to one of her coworkers and was like, I am tired of chili. Can I trade you for this cup of noodles? No, she went and stole the noodles. And oh, that's right. She, she stole left it a little note. Left and a note. left a little no. And, and the coworker was like, it's a 30 cent thing, a cup of noodles. Like, why can't she go buy it? That's how in control of the expenditures oh that Josh gosh. was in that she couldn't go buy he, he, a 30 cent thing, a cup oh. of noodles. He would say some, she would say something to him and he'd be like, don't worry about what I'm spending our money on. Yep. Wow. Or yeah. my and, money and at or this whatever point, it was. He wasn't making money. No, it was her money. His realty business never got off its feet and was crumbling. <laughs> he, so he took out an ad in a local like uh, phone book, essentially didn't really get anything from it. So then he tried to sue the company. Dex. That yeah. for for putting the phone number wrong or all this stuff, well, that ended up he ended up losing that, and that's where he got like ninety thousand in legal fees that he had to pay back. Yeah. So that was a big chunk of that. Oh my gosh! They did not wow. do anything. He he just he, he expected, made everything worse. He just expected things to work for him. Like he mm-hmm. didn't put in the effort. He didn't put in the work. Oh my and he was God. very, very manipulative. A very and manipulative. And honestly, human like Susan, this this poor woman was a yeah. saint. Yeah. Like she, well, I don't know. Honestly, <laughs> she I think so, dude. Too? Like the stuff she had to put up, she with put up with, and and how she can make a good situation out of this garbage. But I watched a video of the way she treated her kids when she was like documenting stuff. Like she would snap. She had a temper to her. But I thought well, she did. But but this thought, is like I'm years saying, into I it. I think that's due to him. I was gonna oh, say 100%. with, with the, yes. the the scrutiny that she was under, like I get the it. pressure. And that's what I'm saying. So she was a saint, and I think he just worked her down. That's I mean, what yeah. I was getting at. I, I was wasn't. Guess, okay. I was okay. Because she's I'm not, not anywhere at fault. She is innocent and completely <laughs> innocent in all she's of this. She's a saint. Gonna say, I right. don't want any of these there comments. Times where I snap, the day. There's times where I snap at my kids, but it's because mm, I've no. had a very stressful But I'm just saying, you can tell that she. They stopped listening right as you went. Yeah, now they're just pissed. Slamming you down. That son of a bitch said that. <laughs> Go ahead, give Chris all the hate. Yeah, down below. you can. <laughs> this guy hates everybody named Susan. <laughs> <laughs> but you can just tell how like it probably just whittled her down. No, but she still definitely. didn't lose hope. Sadly, like, she, like, I think even he's the greatest all the time. person couldn't put up with that forever. I agree. Well, and, but he would like give her like breadcrumbs mm-hmm. to to like 
suck her back yeah. in and give her a glimpse yeah. of hope and so she'd fully get on like, board this with is how oh, sad was it was the frisky the frisky business yeah or whatever. they had a frisky what? business one time he wouldn't um, kiss her yeah, yeah there was one time where all he said when he they got off the phone with each other was i love you and she immediately was like he never says that oh my goodness there's hope there might be something coming around changing me like yeah so sad like, little man, things what, just what a, am i, I missing love here you. That's, what do you mean? that's the thing. Is he she was, was not. They, he was so controlling and, and abusive mentally, so financially. He wouldn't. It was. It was getting towards the end where she was thinking about getting a divorce. Yeah. And but then at the same time she was telling her coworkers and she had a journal at work that she wrote into that Josh didn't know about, and she explained and she said, "I just don't know what to do because I feel like." I'm falling away from Josh, but I see these little glimmers of hope. Like, for instance, the other day we were on the phone with each other, and he told me he loved me. He never tells me that. I thought it was when he dropped her off at work or something. Or maybe, maybe yeah. it was something to the point of that. But, yeah, she was like, you know, he told me he loved me. So I feel like there's a glimmer of hope. And then, like, I guess she had mentioned to him that she's trying to get her baby girl, and, you know, because she wanted a third kid, and I guess he... Had, didn't say did they, no. Did they just have the two boys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's wow. that? What's that condition called when you get kidnapped and you fall? I was just Stockholm thinking. Syndrome. Stockholm I'm thinking syndrome. it's a degree. Oh okay. Same mind. Well, oh set. my head. I wonder if there's a degree of that to it. That's I what I was so. wondering. I, I also think like she she <laughs> had crazy. a vision yeah. of a fairy tale marriage and well, family yeah. and like. Well, doesn't and, everybody when they get married? And like, yeah, that's what you hope for, right? Here's the thing too, and I don't know. This might be different everywhere else i don't know because i'm you know lds religion and i have been my whole life but we're taught as you know growing up divorce is not the answer mm -hmm. it is never the answer you try to do everything you can to save the marriage before you even think about divorce divorce is not the answer it's the cure oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. essentially like yes. yeah <laughs> yeah to, but i mean I, 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 I'm, I'm sure it's a last resort exactly yeah. and, and i'm sure that's you know, everybody's mind thought is that's how <laughs> marriage should be is divorce should be the last thing. But yeah. as you know, LDS, that is one thing that we're really, you know, you were to go through every outlet and with her being really like devout Mormon LDS, I feel like that's how she was. Is mm -hmm. she, if she got a divorce, she didn't want to, you know, she wanted well, to make sure she, she wanted to make sure it was all the other yeah. options. I, f I feel like, I, I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm talking down on like the elder well i'm not talking bad on the religion but sometimes the way that that is taught i feel like it, it it's true but in a very negative way because then you have these couples that are in just misery because they're like well we can't divorce divorce is a sin basically and it's like not all the time like sometimes it is for the best that you divorce yeah like, yeah i will say like to, to your point, like being a full believer and member of the LDS church, like now at this age, like I do look at some people or some, some relationships and I'm like, you should get divor yeah. divorced. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Like, yes, it should be one of the last options, but if it's as terrible as what was going on in this yes. marriage, it should have ended years ago. Yeah. Well, that used to be the old, it wasn't just LDS people. That was old school. It was, thinking. Yeah, that's it was true. Just, that was old school thinking. Yes, yeah. So it was. Once you're married, like that's your commitment. You yeah. think, sign this contract. You are supposed to yeah. be married and you can't do anything about it. I think the, the happy right, Nixon. medium that the message should actually be <laughs> is that you should never go into a marriage treating it like another relationship, yeah. like boyfriend, girlfriend, stuff no. like that. Like you should fully know, okay, we're trying to commit to this for yeah. at least the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's it's the like, mindset you should go in. But again, if things go off the rails and get so bad, Divorce is an option. Right. You can get out. Shit happens. You can well, get divorced. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Well, it's like the, the one saying where it's like divorce isn't 50 50. It's 100 100. Like you have to. Divorce each, or marriage? Marriage. That. I guess yes. both, actually. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you both got to be committed. To <laughs> no, no, way. no way. Divorce is 50 50. I'm kind of like 75 25. <laughs> I do like that, though. Divorce is 100 100. <laughs> so nobody gets anything. <laughs> We both have to be 100% on board to That's divorce. That's right. Nobody wins. No. Everybody <laughs> loses. <laughs> marriage is 100%, 100%. Each side of the marriage, you're not each giving 50%. You're each giving 100%. Correct. Yeah. 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 
Um, exactly. I mean, Jess and I have always joked, and this is just a quote that I've heard forever ago, is that we will never, ever discuss divorce, but we will discuss murder. <laughs> yeah. I will kill her before I, I can't do it. <laughs> Because then you get all of the assets <laughs> just plus kidding. the life insurance. That's See? The, that's the story outside the box. That's a story. <laughs> See, right I, now. I when I say, <laughs> that's legit See, what when Josh I, was thinking. I'm, when I signed yeah. up for this, I wanted a Mr. and Miss Smith kind of wife, like, you know? Yeah. You go out, right guns are uh-huh. yeah. 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 <laughs> But he was so controlling that. Let's get into the power of attorney thing like well, a year okay, before. Yeah, let's well let's lay it out a little more like to dig deeper into how terrible this relationship was yeah. and how he treated her. Little things to the point of he was so controlling over everything that she created a secret bank account yep. and she would put you know $25 a paycheck in there so he wouldn't yeah. notice. She had money secretly going to um to like a, a her, fund for her kids, essentially. No, it was a fund for her parents because they owed him three thousand dollars. That's right. Um, and he said he he put that in the he put he that, put that in the bankruptcy, bankruptcy that three thousand dollars that he parents. owed to his parents, his in laws, <laughs> to, to his uh, in laws, and that is <laughs> forgiven. <laughs> uh-huh. And it was granted, but she still said, "I'm going to pay my parents back." So she had to sneak money away to really? to pay her yeah. parents back. So he so, he monitored everything. He controlled so I, everything. I, Jumping kind of back to the beginning, um, so it was kind of led to believe on the whole um, lunch dinner deal uh, that she was then drugged at lunch. Is that kind of was it's, the suspicion? It's still up in in the air, but yeah, yeah there, it was suspected. No re- yes, because there were no it, remains. But then she goes tests. she goes to sleep and she's asleep for that entire time. So from just before dinner until the following day. No. So is that, that no. night. That night's yeah, when they go when camping. She, oh, so, so, so she just got tired before dinner. Yes. Ended up going to bed that night at regular bedtime hours. But then he takes the kids at midnight while Susan's is, Susan's sleeping. Well, she goes idea, to bed before. Yeah. Before, like at 430 or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. she takes a nap and that's the last anyone hears or sees. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, she wakes so up he, from her nap. They're gone. No, she no, doesn't the four wake of up them. from her nap. No. Yeah. No one. So. Oh. So he, he she goes to she take a nap in the forever. <laughs> yes. She <laughs> so, never woke up from that nap. That's the last nap. Okay. So she naps. She Sorry. died, Tony. Tony, Tony she died. I get <laughs> Wait. <laughs> she died? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> some believe she's still story? out there walking around. <laughs> she just so, forgot who she is. The means so of she goes down. So she goes down for a nap right before dinner. Nap. Yes. And yes. he... And then, but it said that her so the friend, friend never comes the friend, back over. Her friend, friend was leaves. still there when she goes to bed. Yes. Okay. And he's, she's there just doing the yarn while she goes to bed. And then he says, I'm going to go take the kids sledding. And she's like, oh, okay. And she's still just doing the yarn. He's like, uh, I have to lock the front door. And she's like, oh, okay. So she, then she leaves is what okay. happens. Mm-hmm. So she was there working on the yarn. There's a ball of yarn that was tangled. And she so was when working he goes, on it when he went to, when he goes camping, he takes the three of them. And goes so at the, midnight. Yeah, the, yeah midnight. the idea or the basically the thought process of everyone is that at midnight he takes her out to the the middle of West Desert near Dugway Proving Grounds here to in dispose. Utah. Dispose disposes of her, essentially, and that's part of the reason they looked in a lot of mine shafts out there. Also, because he had mentioned once while they were watching TV, like a group of friends and uh-huh. and them, they were watching some show something about murder like a newscast or something. And he mentioned that he would get away with murder easily. I did hear about you, that. All you got to do is, is throw the body down a mine shaft and then collapse it in on itself. Well, he also referred to that other murder that had happened where the guy shot his pregnant wife and yeah, it was right here in Salt oh, Lake. What is that? It was in Salt Lake too. Yeah, it was in Salt Lake. But I can't remember the name of the person, but he made sta- a bunch yeah. of lies. He he stacked up too many lies to where he got caught and had yeah. to confess. And he, Wait, he are you mentioned- talking about the guy that put a, put the, Kids in the oil drum? No. 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 That's Colorado, was, wouldn't it? Yeah, that was no. Colorado. This he was another one pregnant, pregnant wife. wife. He wow. lied to his wife and all the family and made up all these lies, and she caught him on it, and so she he ends up killing her and then lying to the police. But he put her in a dumpster with the mattress. Yeah. And, oh, what is that case? I forgot. Anyways, but he was referring, saying, hey, he got caught because he lied too much. So the whole time he's being interviewed and everything, he doesn't lie. He just gives short well, answers. Well, he had mentioned to someone, if you don't want to get caught, you have to be able to uh, stick with the same lies, 
but also tell enough truths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's basically what he did is, you know, he so, made sure people knew where he was. He made sure when he went camping mm -hmm. that a sheep herder saw him and could verify that he was there with his two kids and no Susan. In the early a.m. in the middle of December. In a snowstorm. On, on his, yep. It was on his way back. Uh, the sheep so the kids saw. were in the car while he was disposing of the body? We don't know. We don't know. This is literally the part no one knows now no. because he's gone. He never... See, the, he, you the, know, he felt them getting close and decided to take yep. it and take them out himself. And so when did the letter actually, when was the letter found and actually her realized letter? that? Well, what the letter, letter that, didn't the you say that? The letter that he wrote to her that she put in the safety deposit yeah. box. The no, letter, the one, the one oh, he didn't she wrote, she wrote it. Wrote it. Oh. She wrote, it was her last, last will, will and testament. testament. Yeah. Oh. So. So after all this crazy abuse for years, there was kind of this breaking point. She came home in December or sorry, in 2009. It was like October was her birthday, I think. Yeah. She came home on her birthday after work and all day. Josh was just sitting in, in the room, like playing a game or tinkering with something. And he bought her a cake and the frosting. But and he didn't put it together. Told her to go frost her. Told own cake. her to go frost her own cake. Yeah. Holy. Okay. And then so she her, does. And then for her birthday present, he ends up buying her a cheap two buck whiteboard. It was like says, a whiteboard yeah, calendar. It says here you can use this to to function your days and to keep everything and, together. And it goes into detail that oh the the like God. plastic had like started to yellow. So it clearly was kind of an older thing that had been sitting like in a discount bin somewhere. Uh -huh. And he even makes the comment like, you should feel happy. I actually spent money on this. Uh -huh. yeah. And, and DVDs, church DVDs. Oh, yeah. Church, church DVDs, DVDs that you get for free from the church as and it is. And he gave that to her like later on in the evening uh -huh. of that day. Like to climax the gifts. So <laughs> basically she had a horrendous birthday. Yeah. And, and it, kind of to what he said earlier, they weren't like super intimate either it'd been like a over a year since they you know at one point there was more than a year that can they I went say, without having sex can I say something real quick he wouldn't even kiss her because he thought if he kissed her he got sick yeah, like he, he would yeah, kiss he her. would get him sick yep so he didn't like to kiss her didn't like to hug her didn't like to hold her hand is it because, because she was thought, of age <laughs> Wow. That's, the, that's, that's it. That's, that's you nailed it. <laughs> Dang. Case closed. Used goods. But again, eventually they did because they had a kid. Even when their first child was born, he was he late to the one. He was late to his wedding. Yeah. Two, he was late to the birth of his child. He didn't even drive his wife to the hospital. Oh my it, God. Her dad came and picked her up. Picked him up. Took no. Oh, yeah. Picked her up and took her to the hospital. And then they went someone back else to the went back to the yeah, house. And him. grabbed him and said, you need Bring to him. get to the hospital and be with your wife. And even when they get there. Shut his computer. Uh -huh. Even when they get there. No, he was in the hospital on the windowsill on the computer. Yeah. While she was delivering. And While he's like, she's hey, delivering. it's time. Yep. Deli <laughs> he goes over, shuts his computer. He's like, your wife needs you. He goes over. And again, this is how stuck she was in this marriage. He goes over, holds her hand, and she looks at her dad. And she's like, see, dad, he's there for me. If I was the dad, bro, that guy would have disappeared in the, the desert. He would have disappeared in the desert <laughs> yeah, for that real. night. Good heavens. Wow. Yeah. And, but here's the thing, too, is like her dad, he even mentions uh, when they when they were engaged and getting married. He's like, I can't you can't tell her no. He's like, I can't go to my daughter and say no. She'll run right at him. Yeah. Push her away. It'll yeah. push her to him even more. Uh -huh. And so he just made sure to like pretty much always be there for her to try to help her. And like, so the one, the one bit of the story that I do remember is the explosion. I remember there Same. was a, uh, a social worker standing yeah. right outside of the house with police on the phone saying she could smell gas. Yep. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then, well, here's here's the I remember funny, seeing it on the news. Yeah, here's the worst part about that too. So she's on the phone with with nine one one, and the operator gets on and she's like, "Yeah, I'm at a house. The person, blah blah blah." The guy asks her like four or five times, "Whose house are you at?" Uh, Josh Powell's. Okay, so what was the last name? Powell. You, you Is spell that, with that an one L, L, L or, or two L's? <laughs> Two so L's. You want to write that down? <laughs> spelled, <laughs> spelled with a T. And then she goes, and then and then the operator goes, 
And uh, what was his first name? Josh. And uh, who is this guy? I He's mean, is this like, really surprising? This is Washington, right? Uh, oh. Is weed legal then? <laughs> no, this this so was his was, Utah house, right? No, this no, was, no, Washington. was Washington. Washington. This yeah. was Washington. And so anyway, she goes and then she explains to him, here's the thing. He took him into the house. I smell gasoline. And he goes, what, 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 I, he was all confused and stuff. And she goes, well, we're going to, uh, we're going to send someone on the way. And she goes, Boom. how fast can they get here? And he goes, we only take, um, serious life threatening matters first. And then after that, it's, it, that's what comes first is life threatening matters. He goes, is this a life threatening matter? And she's like, I don't know if it is. I smell gasoline. The dad who has custody, who does not have custody of these kids just took them from me and locked me out of the house. I smell gas. It's so a, it might be a life-threatening thing. Well, we can't prove it's life-threatening, so someone will be there shortly. Regardless, it's considered a kidnapping at this point. Exactly. Yeah. Even if it's the biological parent, if they do not have custody of the kids, it's kidnapping. Well, that's why yeah. he got awarded $100 million, the father. Yeah. So... Yeah, well, and then that's the hundred million. Cox did, yep. yes. And here's the other funny oh, thing yeah, yeah. from the state of Washington. The, her father, Susan. Yeah. 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 Here's the other thing too, is the uh, the people who had the kids who were over the side of Josh seeing the kids, they screwed up royally because they were not supposed to be meeting at his house. Yeah, they were supposed to be meeting at a neutral neutral site with people around so it makes me so curious a park or something like that it makes me curious those people the 911 dispatcher it's like where are they today now like how the, how the do you 911 live with dispatcher, yourself? if i remember right i think he did apologize i'd quit and they used it as a training exercise yeah he's like oh this my. isn't for me i screwed up big time yeah for well, real i'm gonna should. go work at blockbuster should the sad <laughs> thing is is that's why it failed oh and that's why blockbuster <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey the last one standing is in washington it's oregon oregon the sad thing is, is like I said before, I've listened to a lot of murder podcasts, and they have the talking between nine one one dispatchers and stuff like that. You wouldn't believe how idiotic some of these nine one one dispatchers are. They don't take some of these matters seriously. In fact, some of them are yelling like there's one I listened to the other day. No, it was on this one. The sister called up and she was talking to the dispatcher and she's crying and she's like, I, I, my brother's going to do something stupid. This is what's going on. He sent out these emails. He's saying goodbye. Like yeah. there's something going on. We need to look into it, but she's crying. And the dispatcher stops her mid sentence and says, listen, you need to stop crying. I cannot understand a word you're saying. If you want to continue this, we're going to hang up the conversation now. You know, and it's like, you've got to be kidding some me. Of these guys, I, I don't want to make it. You, I don't want to give them the excuse in any way, but at the same time, you got to wonder how many hundreds of calls are they taking in, we'll say, mm -hmm. a week that are, that are just completely blown up, people frantically calling about the dumbest things. And so Good. you probably be... you. What am I trying to say? Boy, you, you cried wolf syndrome. Is yeah, what it, yeah. yeah, they build up this like... Um, like immunity tolerance. or not tolerance. They kind of, like they, they start to template match because yeah. they're like, I've heard this before. Nothing ever happens from it. Yeah, Whereas right. this situation, okay, typically it does that. They, they get into a groove and it's not a good thing, but I understand it because yeah. it's an efficiency yeah. thing. Yeah. It's like, I mean, almost like stereotyping. You get complacent yeah. with it. Exactly. Because if you tried to tell your dispatchers, take every situation as if it's truth, you'd be sending officers left and right. Mm-hmm. And it's, we just sadly don't have the manpower. Well, yeah, to that point, like he, Josh Powell, that day, he was sending emails and making phone calls to people and basically saying goodbye yep. to everyone that yeah. mattered to him. I just okay? hate that he had to take he the boys with him. He filled up two five gallon uh, tanks of gasoline and doused the entire house. Doused the house and blew well. it up. Blew it up. Um, as soon as the kids were See, in the I thought up. when I first heard about it and I. I saw the word gas. I thought like the gas Like a line. gas leak. So did yeah. I. I remember yeah. that vivid thought. Yeah. See, and I have two trains of thought with this whole thing. As there, one is he had mentioned about the blood being tainted. Maybe he was trying to just get rid of the line. Or second, that he didn't ever want the kids to say anything about where Susan was and, and to keep it a mystery. Because they Cause had so to have seen something. They knew. Well, they, they, they mentioned knew. things. Even being that young, two and four years old, at some point that memory could flash. And You can easily... Yeah, yeah, I've heard stories of like little kids where they're like, 
they experience that trauma and they're like, why, why isn't mommy moving? Yeah. Like, well, what's wrong with mommy? Why is she asleep? Well, I, ha- I hate to use this reference because it's fictional, but like Dexter, right? He he sees his mom murdered, and he's only, if I had to guess, four years old. I, it I probably think it was like two. Like two. Two. Like two his was brother was baby, four. Yeah. Okay. But it's like even he still has those memory flashes and different things because mm-hmm. the mind is a powerful thing. Well, and he may have been even younger than that because he was still in diapers. Well, the four-year-old had said that uh, mommy went camping but didn't come back with us. She wanted to stay with the shiny rocks. Mm-hmm. She, oh. So he had the four-year-old the police officers. So he'd said that. And then he'd also said something about staying at the di- with the dinosaurs, staying with the f- pretty flowers. So Jeez. he's... So, Kind of giving locations, but they still but they never couldn't found. piece it together. The sad mm-hmm. thing is, is everything you just said, like thinking of Utah deserts, that's anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. So. That is well, all you the said, desert. You said Dugway, right? Yeah. Dugway. Doesn't Dug- Dugway have bombing grounds out there? The proving grounds, yeah. Dug- testing yeah. sites. It's a, it's a testing site for... Dugway kind of has a... A nickname of being Area 52. Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they have a lot of weird stuff. Mm-hmm. It's super top secret, but, super protected. Yeah. And they do a lot of drone flying. They do a lot of, like, you know, when, when the F-16s or the F-22s are flying over our houses and stuff, they're going out there a lot of times to run drills. They mm-hmm. test, they test munitions and stuff out there. Yeah. Well, what I'm getting at is I wonder if he, like, buried her out in the bombing area. Maybe. But well, the thing also, is he wouldn't be able on. to get so to So they it. also yeah. messaged... Dugway, so Dugway has the geode beds. They had gone to the geode beds before where you go find geodes. It's Mentioned really cool. Topaz Mountain. Mm-hmm. So that whole stretch along the Pony Express Road, I mean, it's you've got five, There's six hours of, of desert out there to where Dang. you could she could be anywhere. Well, and if if she's even there, it might yeah. have been a distraction. That's I don't think she's there. I don't I don't think so, so either. On this cold podcast, he gives his explanation of what he thinks happens. And I down to a T, I think what he says happens is I, I completely agree with it. What do you say? What do you say? say? So he pretty much says that, um, the whole leading up to the deserts and all that stuff was basically a ploy. Uh huh. It's, it's a way to get people looking at places where she's not at. Um, he believes almost impossible to find. He, he believes that, um, he did take her camping, Mm -hmm. but dropped her body off somewhere before they got to the campsite. Um, so when he gets back from camping that day, they take him to the police station. Um, they were trying to hold his van as long as they could to try to get a tracker on it, but they were waiting on the judge to sign off on the warrant. Yeah. And before they could get the van back to him, Josh took off and went straight to the airport, rented a car from the airport and took off and drove. They said it was a radius of 400 miles. I thought it was 800. 800. Yeah, that's, so 800 yes. miles. So that's a radius of 400. Because oh, yeah, yeah. you yeah, can yeah. only go out 400, come back 400. Yeah. So they had a radius of 400 miles that he could have gone. He was gone for 18 hours. And Jeez. so he believes that in that 18 hours worth of time, um, he, was, he had a plan that um, Susan was going to be found and believed to be murdered somehow or whatever. But he wasn't expecting them to be at the house at eight o'clock in the morning. He was mm-hmm. expecting to come home that night at five o'clock. Nobody knew where she was. He was going to try to pick her up from work. She wasn't there. He mm-hmm. was going to file a missing person's report. And then magically her body was going to be found somewhere. Yeah. But the that daycare. didn't happen that way. So they believe in that 18 hour period that he went and picked up her body and disposed of it in other ways. Um, the brother, Michael, um, is believed to gone and help him at that time. Mm. And then what he did after that, when he got back, um, he talks about a bunch of, um, so at this point he's disposed of the body somewhere at that point. Yeah. When he gets back and everything's going, there's a point where he, um, takes this trip to Washington and comes back and, um, and why, and this time that his van is now tracked, he's back in his van. And why the police weren't looking at him at this point, they don't know. But this 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 guy on the cold podcast, he looked into, he actually got records of all of this and tracked where he went. It shows him tracked. This was like a week after, and it shows him making dumpster runs. And it shows him going to one place, stopping by a dumpster, goes to another stop, goes to a dumpster. Um, he even came out here to... Um, uh, into uh, 21st Street, North Ogden area, 
went to a Dream dumpster Martin. um on his way out to idaho stopped at some weird um place like in the middle of nowhere over uh over a river edge type thing five minutes not even enough time to take a nap nothing he was there for five minutes goes on his way again and so what they believe is and then same thing on his way back from um, washington back to utah he was doing the same thing and they believe what he was doing is any incriminating evidence whatsoever that the police could have on him he was dumping in dumpsters. He was disposing of disposing it. Either that or everything. putting off the trail. Cause yeah. Because when his van was tracked, too, he also went all the way out to Wendover. That's stopped. true, too. He stopped That's, at a, a rock pit for two hours. That's what led him to Eli. Yes. At that one mm-hmm. point. Yes. Stopped at a rock pit for two hours. But he'd stop and get off of every exit on the way out to I-80. Mm-hmm. Stop, get back on. So he's seeing if somebody was tracing him or whatever. Stopped at a rock pit for two hours and then went to West Wendover and then came back. So, I don't know. I don't think he was as dumb as, like I said, you'd think. Yeah. No. But, or he was just extremely paranoid and just... Just doing, dumb enough, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, they say that the police said we never could fully arrest him because we get him in check, but we never could get him in checkmate. Like, yep. referring to yeah. chess. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. that's so If they had one thing on him, but then he just was always... He, unfortunately, was always one step ahead. That's, and it was 10 minutes. So, he took off to the airport... They had his van done 10 minutes after he left. And the frustrating thing about that is, though, is, I mean, maybe at the time you wouldn't think about it. I mean, it's, you know, hindsight's 50-50. 2020. 2020. 2020. Thank you. That's incredible. Um, vision, right? <laughs> 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 Eagle I mean, hindsight's always 2020. But if I was that officer, I'd be like, listen, Josh Powell's out there waiting. Watch him. If he leaves... Tell him his van's done. People need to stay on him. See yeah. where he goes. Follow him. Follow him. Mm-hmm. I think they you know? screwed up a few times because they I had do. to do four or three or four search warrants to his house because mm-hmm. they'd forget to grab things and they'd have to go back. Mm-hmm. They didn't do a search warrant the night they took him and were questioning him. They didn't file for a search warrant because they thought they wouldn't get it, but they should have done it anyway. And to that's search the, the officer van. even said he goes, "I learned a lesson on that one." He goes, "I know I never now." Forgot it. He goes, "I didn't think we would have get the search warrant." He goes, "But now." I've learned to let the judge tell me no. He's like, I told myself no at that point. And he's like, from now on, it's the judge will tell yeah. me no. Well, they also found that burnt up piece of metal on top of the drywall in the under storage of the van. Yeah. So that was the other thing is. Did they ever find out what that Dave, was? Dave Colley. That's his name. Who's the reporter? Yeah. He believes that he had murdered Susan with his power drill gun. And because that was the only piece of tool that they really couldn't find. And then that was she did. She made a at one point. She made a video of all of their stuff. Yes. And the only yeah. one thing they really couldn't find was one of his happened. power drills. So they, he believes that she, he murdered her with a power drill. And then to get rid of that, he used his, what was it? That big the old settling, torch. the settling torch just melted just it into melted oblivion. Melted the crap into that. Cause he got the fireproof, um, Wood that you're, or what were you talking it's about? Drywall. It's yeah, the drywall. Yeah, fire, the fireproof drywall. They found that and a big old, me, like a bunch of metal heaps or whatever in the back of his van in a in a bag that he couldn't get rid of. He tried. They, I think they stopped him before he could get rid of it. They couldn't determine what it was, but they do believe that that was the murder weapon. They said it was mostly still though, not that much plastic. So I don't know. I don't know. Plastic probably got almost vaporized. Well, I mean, you, you'd still have remnant of it, a lot yeah. of it. But that's, yeah, they do believe that that was the murder weapon. Why even take it back with you? Well, I mean, didn't he say, like, he Why went, not melt and he went to get a torch and said, I need a torch that can cut through, like, a half inch of metal or something, mm-hmm. or still? Why, like, so specific? And the funny thing is, is when the people who he was buying it from, the guy asked him, he said, well, well, what are you looking to do? And he goes, just looking to mess around. I just want to see what I can do with it. Yeah. Or maybe they told him. Maybe they told him it could cut through a half yeah, inch of something steel. like That's that. That's what it was. I wonder how long he had to think about this. I was just thinking about that. Because if he didn't have a job and he was just sitting at home with all these tools, so, this had to have been extremely premeditated. Yeah. And he had to know. Because, again, she had she had made a last will and testament. Uh-huh. She was ma- sending emails, messages, basically talking to anyone that would listen to her about how terrible her marriage was. I honestly think. She was talking about it for years. I yeah. honestly think he was trying to get her to have an accident too because he made her ride a bike to and from work on a busy on on the busy road and she even mentioned that yeah so he wouldn't let her drive the car so she had to go to work which was like 15 miles away 
by bike every day. And at some point, she'd be in a bike lane about a foot wide with semis going 50 miles an hour past her. Mm -hmm. So she tells her friend, she's like, she's like, I wouldn't be surprised if he's trying to, he could easily set up an accident, set up an accident to take me out. Mm -hmm. Yep. And going back to what he said about power of attorney, this dude convinced her into the worst deal ever of essentially giving him power of attorney over everything. He had the right to pull plug on her if ever she was on life support and only him. Like she, he was basically having her cut her dad out of any kind of trust for the kids. So Uh if, if she died, Josh got everything. If Josh died, it went into a trust for the children led by his brother and her dad. Yep. Yeah. Is, is, he, he is this in any way her. relation to Jamie Lynn Spears? No. No. Because <laughs> okay. it sounds like they could be the same right? person. Right? Dude. But, see, I was thinking Daybell. Like, could you imagine Josh, Josh Powell and Lori Daybell? Oh, Ooh. man, that's a perfect Ooh. storm. They'd kill each other. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, the more we talk about this, I do think Chris is right. Like he he was scary smart. Like he could have been he preparing was. this for well, a long time. This reporter of it's like of a cold, slow burn. He he believes that this was like two years in the making. Yeah, because he he believes it started. He started thinking about it when they first filed for life insurance. Because he took oh, out yeah. a, was it a half a million half or was it a full million? I, don't know. I remember they mentioned half a million a lot. I think it was a million. It was a million for her, and it was two hundred fifty thousand a piece for each kid. And then half a million ch- on him, probably. Okay, it was a million and a half, but there's two hundred fifty thousand on each kid, and that's oh, okay. why. And that's why he believes at first Josh was trying to make it look like a accident or a murder, mm-hmm. because then he could claim the life insurance and would have all this money to himself. But since everything went awry, he can't claim life insurance because. After can't you can't, went, you can't yeah. claim life insurance on someone where they don't know is dead or not. But he went straight and got a yeah, retirement. But then, yeah, then he went yeah. straight and, and got a retirement. The way he mentioned it, it was only within the next five years that that policy worked. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So like Gosh. something yeah. that happened you, within like five that, years. That or something doesn't make like sense that. to yeah. me. Like the well, power of attorney see, is no, that what the, the life, life insurance. insurance. It's another one of those hindsight's twenty twenty thing though. Like now that you have all the information, you're like, duh. But as they're trying so to figure it out, he put an expiration date on this. Yes, he was trying to make Something's it happen, happen. Yeah. accidentally. And, I think. And at the first. sad thing about it all too is, is this Powell family. I one hundred percent believe that Josh and the brother were immediately into cahoots with this whole thing. I think he knew. I'm about sure the dad it. was too, but he was in jail. The dad, though, I don't think he knew about anything that happened to Susan until Josh moved in a month later, and then. At that point, I think eventually he opened up to his dad and told his dad what happened. Because then his dad started coming up with all these lies, like she was this way, or maybe she ran off with this guy, or maybe... But I think eventually it came down. You had the three of them who knew exactly what happened, and then you had the three of them leading the police here, leading the police here. Everybody's going on a... Just basically on a run. And then all three of them die, and the secret's gone. I mean... Now, why did the brother kill himself? Most likely. So I don't think again, he can live with what happened. Yeah. Again, going back, like their childhood was horrendous. Oh, yeah. And yeah, Josh well, was mean, the we, second oldest, right? We didn't really dive into their childhood. Their childhood was just, it was horrific. Like, again, the dad was super cr- controlling and manipulative. Creepy. And so Creepy he would, he would basically, belief. yeah, he would turn all the kids, try to turn the kids against the mom. Oh, the yeah. sister was old enough to realize. Like her mom, there was a point where her mom sat her down and she's like, Jennifer, like, look at where your dad's going. Cause he was trying to pull everyone away from the church. And he's like, she's like, look at where your dad's going. The path he's on. Didn't he try to tell one of them to go after the mom with the butcher knife? Wasn't that... Uh, I, I, I don't know about that. I don't. I know that that could be a lie. That could be, <laughs> but, but I don't think so. I remember. But something then she about said, that. "Jennifer, look at where what the gospel teaches. You look at what Christ teaches. Compare the two. Where where do you want to end up? Yeah. And that's when Jennifer had like that. She had a fast and hard decision. She's like, I don't want to be associated with that. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, he she was, had an epiphany. Exactly. She's like, she's like on this hand." 
you have Christ who preaches joy and happiness and love and, and kindness. And then on this side, you have this disgusting, creepy person who's like getting into every bad thing possible. Mm-hmm. And, well, you know, it's a dark life. Let's just say and, she chose to be estranged. And yeah. yeah, well, and even at one point, too, she offers up to the police and says, I want to go. I want to wear wire. And she offers to go back into the household and have dinner with these guys and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she's like, and she wore a wire the whole time in there. Yeah. She and ended up getting married, having kids yeah. and like ha- living a really, really good life. Yeah. And she really never had any association with that type of family. But then she's like, we're, we're headed back. She's like, I guarantee you, I could get a dinner with my, with the family at the house. And she offers to the police. I want to wear a wire, all this stuff. So she does want to get him to confess. And she ends up pulling yeah. Josh aside and it was like, where is she? What blah, blah, blah. Like finally gets really blunt with him. Like, what did you do? And the whole time he's like, I didn't do anything. I don't know what happened. My lawyer said not to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, my lawyer said not to talk about it. Telling his sister and that. Meanwhile, her brother or his brother Mike, and he said this is what they would do. He's sitting outside the door, and when there was people inside the house that they didn't trust, one would always stay close to the situation. And as soon as things got out of hand, he would go immediately grab Steve, tell Steve what's going on, and then they would kick that person out. Just a bag of nuts in that. And so that's what they did. He immediately went and grabbed Steve. Steve jumps in, starts yelling at her. You're claiming of your brother, this and that, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Basically, they kick her out of the house. So you you can leave. You're not invited back here anymore. The sad part is, is that she's she's still on wire and she's driving away and you just hear her sobbing. And she's finally like, and her husband's like, what's going on? Are you okay? And she goes, he did it. He's like, I can look at his face and look in his eyes. He killed Susan. Yeah. Wow. And she was Jeez. just like, he killed Susan. He did something with it. And the family's in on it. And that's 100%. She's like, I wish I could have got a confession, but he killed Susan. Yeah. And that point on, she never talked to the family again after that. Well, her wow. dad called her like the most oh, horrific. Yeah. He called names. her like horrific names and said, how dare you go off on your brother like this? And that's funny because then the husband jumps in and says, how dare you talk to your daughter like yeah. that? Like, who do you think you are? Yeah. And ah, man, I wish I could have been him and just sucker punched him right, right in the face. Oh my gosh. Right? I'm going to, how cool. dare you with my fist? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. dude. Oh oh my God. God. Those are some people I could make disappear. Now, yeah. Right. Sorry. Yeah. I had, where's wh- the vigilante and all this yeah, that just comes real. in and doesn't need the Where is she? (laughs) 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 You got him. In my ears, bro. (laughs) Jeez. I wasn't even like Now, I do have a question. Um, You guys, I think you guys were also talking about the Josh, the stuff that they found uh, in his computers. Yeah. Didn't yeah. you say they also found creepy stuff in his so computers? So that, that, I haven't gotten to that part yet. Because yeah. you said so all the stuff we've talked about so far was the grandpa. Steve, yeah, so the grandpa, Steve. they they, they found Ooh. voyeurism. Um, they found a video. What ultimately got him arrested was child porn, and they found video of him filming he would his film the neighbors. neighbors. Wait, and no, 11, this is Josh or Steve? No, this is Steve. Steve. Okay. So this the, he was filming an 11-year-old and a... Uh, oh. No, a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old girls have taking baths, his next-door neighbors. And so ultimately, they, they took the kids away from the family at that point because of the situation going on, and they didn't know who knew about the situation. You've got kids in this situation, and so ultimately, it's just not a good place for these two kids to be. Yep. It's so almost like it's like they were, they were looking for... Susan Powell and her murder, and it's like, ah, crap, what's this disgusting crap we also got to deal with Yeah, now. because but, they, well, they went in, the reason they found it is they went in and they raided the house. Yeah. They basically got a warrant for the house in, in, in Washington. Um, in the meantime, they found stuff on Josh's computer, and um, basically he had a bunch of um, porn searches. Um, they found images of fake nudes of... Um, Oh, I can't. Oh, uh, what's her bucket on Harry Potter? Hermione. Um, oh, okay. Emma Watson, Emma Watson mm-hmm. and another girl right around the same age, which at that time would have put them under age as well, I believe. Oh, yeah. And so he's they basically it's it's you know it's it's fake fake ones you know faces are put over the thing, but at that time I think they were under age as well, and so they're going well. Wait a minute, he's got 
pretty much underage porn here, even though they're not, but it is. It's like and the, the body is legal, the face isn't. Yeah. Like, and so that, uh, that that's what they found on his computer, and they ultimately no at that point just decided, like, <laughs> hmm. this is not a place for these kids. So that's ultimately what got the kids yes. taken away yep. at the point. Wow. The nuts don't Swish. fall too far from the tree, huh? Yeah. I'm just going to say right now, I need a pact. If I need to dispose of anything, we got we got each other's backs here. Bro, you see you've seen that TikTok, right? Where it's like, hey, I've hey, got a plan. I got a plan. And I can't tell you what we're doing. <laughs> but if we pull it off, it'll be really awesome. That's like, that, like yeah, it's like it's it like lays out this thing. It's like, I don't know where we're going, I don't know what's gonna happen. And then it's like, whose car are we taking? <laughs> like, oh, no question. I, questions I took the I took the rocks one where yeah, he's talking no, about take, jumping out of a building or something. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 another one, one where it's like some sketchy's gonna happen, but I'm not gonna. We're not gonna ask questions. We're just gonna be like, "Who's driving?" Have yeah. you ever seen you the in? movie The Town? Yeah, it's been a long time, but yeah, they basically do the same thing as Ben Affleck, Jeremy Renner, and uh, Ben Affleck walks in and Jeremy Renner into his apartment. Jeremy oh, Renner's that, apartment. I think that's what it's from. Is that what it's from? Yeah. And he goes, he goes, hey, um, I need to ask you to do something. Uh, I can't tell you why. I can't tell you what's going on, but ultimately. We're going to beat some people up, and uh, that's all you need to know. And he goes, whose car are we taking? Yes, that's, <laughs> it. that's, that's, it. that's the one. That's it. Yeah, and Jeremy is like, whose car are we taking? And he goes, all right. That's right. I'd say I'd say whose car are we taking any of you. Yeah. <laughs> See, right. Sadly for me, it's the one where it's like, hey, I need someone dead, and I need it to look like an accident. It's like, say no more. And then it's like the <laughs> news line. Is horrible the, bosses? <laughs> no, and then it's like the news line the next day. It's like, man beaten to death with crowbar, banana pill found next to him. <laughs> 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 the uh, banana pill did it, right? <laughs> oh, he man. slipped on the banana pill. Uh, well, oh, oh, I thought the banana pill hit him with the crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyways, what's that? What's that fast happened? forward. It's just a meme or something. Oh, <laughs> fast forward to today. We mentioned at the very beginning of this, the Diesel Brothers. They went on this uh, this <clears throat> basically a three episode YouTube excavation of a yeah. mine shaft out by that desert. Now, so all they hadn't looked at every mine shaft. No. So here, let me explain. So you, you kind of can't. Dude, there's the a hard dude. Thing. There's a ton. So there's, there's a, a ton, ton of abandoned mines and caves and stuff out and there. And some Kevin. of them are so w- old and decrepit that yeah, like you take they one step bur- and you could fall hundreds. Well, of they feet. get birds' nests in them where things have fallen yeah. down and they can't yeah. get past it. So the ones that were straight shots, they could t- put cameras to the bottom. Exactly. So. Tell the backstory about this. Yeah, mine. so so these the Diesel Brothers, they essentially in a in a different YouTube episode, they met this guy who lives in like his own mountain co- compound. Mm-hmm. Dude, like built this whole compound, right? Looks like Woody Harrelson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he's a, he's a funny dude, yeah. but uh, just kind of like one of those preppers, like out living on their own, doing their own thing, untouched by society. It's like leave us alone. We just want to live our lives. Well, they they meet this guy and they start to talk to him and stuff. Well, somehow they they end up talking about Susan Powell and like that West Desert area. And this guy mentions he's like, oh, I have a friend and me and this friend out in in November of 2009 were were just out. Uh, what do they call it? Rock hounding? Rock hounding. Yeah, rock hounding. Just looking. For, that's the cool way of saying looking for rocks. <laughs> for gems. Um, I love rock hounding. <laughs> <laughs> so they're out rock hounding. An old soul. <laughs> Hey, and these hey, dudes, these right. dudes do look like they would be your friends. <laughs> so they're out rock hounding. So do you guys. So what do you say? <laughs> we only got room for I've one got, camo. I've got lots of different types of friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, they find and they find a mine shaft, and this mine shaft's like over hundred years old. It has a, it's called an A frame. So essentially, it just has a big wooden frame above it, and that's where the pulley system is. That has like mm. the cabling that drops down in and pulls up the ore and all that stuff. But big old mine shaft. It was about what two hundred twenty feet down. It's super super deep. Yeah. Well, anyways, they see it and they're like, "Oh man, that'd be a good place to look at." It looks like it's been untouched for a very long time. Looks jammy. Looks full of gems and rock houndy. And but at the time they didn't have the equipment they needed to safely go into to it. repel down. So they're like, okay, let's you know mark this. We'll we'll be back. Okay, again, this was November of two thousand nine. Susan goes dis- disappears in December that same year. They end up not going back until January two thousand ten, 
When they get back... The end of January. Right. When they get back, the A-frame has been... Somebody set it on fire, and it looks like they intentionally made it collapse into itself. Oh. And then it also looks like a bunch of debris and rock and other stuff had been pushed into it. So what Chris mentioned happened. Like, it created this big old bird's nest which basically makes it extremely hard to get into the shaft now because it's full of, of timber and charred pieces of wood. It's unstable. It's dangerous. Tons of dirt piled on the rock or on the timber that's cross-linked and everything. Mm-hmm. To so, anyways, it so you can't get to the bottom of the shaft. They're talking about it with these guys, and they're like, well, that's, that's wild. Like, And nobody, like, did you go to the police about this? And they're like, yeah, we mentioned it. Just some cops, but nobody like nobody seemed to really care or worry about it to where they didn't even look into it. So lo and behold, now they uh, the Diesel Brothers in Diesel Brothers fashion build a a big old rig, this like military rig that they turn into like a crane. Things got they like bought it as yeah. Things mm-hmm. got like what like ten it's a wheels recovery, on uh-huh. it. It's a recovery unit. Big old yeah. big old thing, right? And they, of their own volition, go out to this de- the West Desert. They spent like a week out there excavating. They go down. They started pulling up timber. They would shore up the walls and kind of drill it into other existing mine shaft walls and stuff. Um, and they spent like over a week out there, got to the bottom, dug down about 40 feet into dirt, dirt, debris and stuff that built up over the last, you know, 13 years. And they ended up finding some clothing, like remnants of clothing and bones. Mm -hmm. And it was just a few pieces of bone. Seemed to be like a rib bone, maybe a vertebrae and stuff. And they sent it out for DNA testing. So Mm -hmm. they found one of the one of the best DNA places in like all the area, (laughs) sent it out for DNA testing. And just today, Zach found this. Just today they actually came back with the results. And unfortunately, the bones don't even belong to a human. No. Really? So what yeah. about the clothing? That's what I was wondering. Because they didn't mention no, it. No, my guess is is it's probably remnants of leftover from the mining. I don't know. Really? Yeah, maybe. maybe. Um, I don't know. That's a good series to watch, too. Did you watch those videos? They no, up, I watched a couple of them. Yeah, I, yeah the videos were way cool. Yeah. Because and I, I th- Well, I think, too, the reason that they like that area as well is Chuck Cox now has all the information that the police had because the police, once it went Mm -hmm. cold, they basically released everything that was available um, Mm -hmm. to the public. Mm -hmm. Uh, Minus, you know, they had to go through, and I can't remember what the word is, but they basically go through and black out all that. Yeah, they did, did a redaction on some stuff. But Chuck Cox has a lot of it, and Chuck Cox was like, this makes sense. Mm-hmm. Where this is at, everything, blah blah blah. The it timeline. makes sense. The timeline. So Chuck Cox was even like, "This is." Yeah, this. he even came out and was yeah. there. They lowered him down and stuff, but he yeah. even looked at the clothing and he even says, "I have a good feeling about this because yeah. it all just lined up I and s- made so much sense." I feel like just because this was a bust and and it didn't come back, it, it still doesn't mean that this mine brought, is out of yeah. the question. I think well, it brought some light back to it too, and it's it's just so hard because honestly, at this point. The only thing left is to give the parents closure. Exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. Just, to like, to just to finally say, this is what happened. I mean, the, s- the nice doubt. thing is, is if you ask anybody who knows anything about this murder or, yeah, well, I'm going to say murder. Uh-huh. Um, everybody knows that Josh Powell did it. You talk to anybody 100%. who's looked deeply into this, they all, uh, 100%, Josh Powell did this. Unfortunately, what? he was just too smart and he owned up to what he said mm-hmm. if i if if i am gonna kill someone i'm gonna make sure that the police will never be able to find well them. and i i don't want to give him too too much credit because at the end of the day he pussied out he did and he killed himself he did and because took his kids everything like, was getting too close he realized like he was gonna get caught he was coming he was up on checkmate he was coming up on checkmate and, and the didn't want to do it pansy a little pussy that he is <laughs> Had yeah. to freaking For real, quit. Huh? He yeah. rage quit life yeah. like a douchebag. As most so of them do. Like, yeah. really, they're low lives, man. Gosh. I was gonna say. I was gonna say that. I him blowing himself up was his confession. It was one hundred. Why do you have right. to take his kids with him? Right. Though? I hate yeah, that's that. so See, I, the worst I part think... about it is too is, is 
I don't I don't want to go into it unless you guys want to, but it's how he did it too with his kids. So yeah. now nah, I'm good. I know enough. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I think so comparing him to like Lori Daybell, I do think a part of him was delusional enough. Like he had this weird delusion of self grandeur that he was some special thing and and mm-hmm. I wonder if in his own mind he was doing something noble with his kids. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he was just that's, so sick and that's twisted. Why I, said, I don't know. Like if he thought he was doing the world a service or if he just wanted to keep it a mystery forever or I don't know what he was doing. I think it was a mixture of company. I think it was a mixture of he didn't want to give up. He didn't want to give out of anything. He didn't want to go to jail. Number two, he couldn't live without his kids. Now I've got I've got two things. What at some point I swear you guys also said that Steve was also kind of looked at as a uh, person, person of interest. Person of interest yeah. for her missing, right? Yeah, that's again, because, because he loved her so much. Because there just, were just the love triangle yeah. thing. Oh going yeah. On. Well, I thought maybe that he that he, he kidnapped her. He told yeah. he that. told anyone that would listen about it that he that she was coming on to him. Yeah. That she initiated all this. That she was gonna run away with him. All this crazy. Here's stuff. where got you. Here's where I mentioned the funny part about him. He wrote songs. No way oh, yeah. about her. What? And him sing s- one for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. If, I don't need that kind of explicit no, content in my life. It, no, it's it's not bad <laughs> songs, but he actually sings them. Oh, he sings them in the tapes. <laughs> yes, in in his audio tapes and stuff. Like yeah. they in this cold podcast, you, like he plays some of them. Gosh, oh, that, they like, are horrible. They out. have all wow. this information on coldpodcast.com. Oh, he or plays, too, he and plays them yeah. and their own voices. No. And again, you hear their voices and you just. I don't want to listen to this anymore. Now, last thing, just because I I like to dabble in this space because we are YouTubers in essence, and mm-hmm. I've been in this space for a very long time, but I don't know the Diesel Brothers. Yeah. Is, that, is that what it is? I'm all like, how much do you think is legitimate? Or do you think they were doing this for publicity? I think like I'm do you sure. think they found Something that could have been like, hey, this could be for some really they good put YouTube in some content. Work, though. They, they did. They did. And here's the only reason I don't think they would met like joke is because they got the dad involved. Got you. I. I mean, there's I'll, so I'll be much honest. stuff now that's done for the click. Yeah. I'll be honest. There is. I've, I've met them both and they're all right. They're like, not douches. They are. They are, but not terrible. Yes. Got you. Tolerable uh, douches. Tolerable douches. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and like the, <laughs> the like, you know, I, one step ahead. some of the people they hang out with and stuff. And, but I don't think they're that terrible of people. No, I want to say they, they were would. really genuine. Yeah. It, I, I don't think you're I, wrong. I think there's definitely some publicity and, in it. Well, and here's the oh, thing too. It's, it's like that. Uh, it's, it's just that win. perfect opportunity. It is. It's like it's yeah. we genuinely it's care about this. Up. And we can easily, they made three episodes. Each one was like an hour long. Yeah. yeah. And I watched them all. It was like, they, they, they do have a good team. The sad thing is too, now that it's a cold case, police aren't going to put their time and investigation into going to do that. Yeah. So they spent all their time and money into doing uh-huh. that. They did put their own stuff in. To get the bones tested and everything, they paid for that. They put expedited onto that stuff. So I mean, and, I mean it was they all were out of their wallet. They were digging like well into like three, four a.m. in the morning. Yeah, they were in the hole, which is this big. Mm. Digging. Oh, well, part of it too is he's like he's an explorer. He likes exploring. So he just said he wanted to get to the bottom of that just to make sure. He goes either way. Either we find her or we find that this is not an option to where she was buried. And this is just a dope cave. <laughs> but it was scary, man, because. They, they got rid of the bird's nest and then they got to another area and they thought they'd hit the bottom. It was another bird's nest with tons and tons and tons of dirt on top of another yep. bird's nest. Really? So they thought they got to the bottom. So it was, they put a lot of work. There's yeah. ended up being three bird's nests they went through to get to the bottom. And Holy they got God. to like the second or third one. And I believe he was like, this is weird. This can't be the bottom. Cause yeah. he's like, we've only gone like a hundred feet. We were told this could be like 280 feet. You and know, what's so, crazy though is with technology nowadays, Mine shafts could totally be like checked with drones. Like you could just if send you a drone there. If yeah. you can get oh, the yeah, drone this, down though. That one was, it, 
there was no way. That's why they thought it was a good candidate because you couldn't get past that bird's yeah. nest. And it to looked see intentionally it. caved in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. and I know this but one's I caved in, but the ones that aren't caved in, yes. you could oh, definitely yeah. send a drone. What about down. like that? Let's do laser. Even with LIDAR. Let's go do it. What about that laser mapping? Like they've found like the underground pyramids and different things like that. Yeah. Like, can't they do something similar with the mine shafts? And there's, yeah, there's the Raptor a lot and T Rex. Of... They found it with that thing. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, where they shoot the. Yeah, there's a lot of technology. Like there's, it. <laughs> there's satellites that can find certain things like that. There's ground penetrating radar. Yeah. But some of it is it's surprisingly advanced, but also not. Yeah. Mm. Say, can it pick like up ground a body? penetrating radar? If you ever see it, can it like, make money? When they do it, it's literally like this. I think think like the the staticky TV from the 90s, mm-hmm. but like take that picture and compress it, and then every once in a while have an extra white spot, and they're like, "Yep, something's there." And something's there. <laughs> we don't know what it is, so, but it's there. So it's yeah. exactly like Jurassic Park. That's what Park. I'm saying. No, it <laughs> is. It still yeah. is. Yeah. Because I've been watching these shows like uh, uh, there's the Hunt for Skinwalker, or there's the Skinwalker Ranch and stuff, right. but then there's another show out called Blind Frog Ranch, which is like right next to it. And these guys have like a cave system on the property that they're trying to get into because they think there might be like Aztec gold in it or something. And they bring out all kinds of different resources mm. to see in there. And they huh. just can't. Like, it's just so hit or miss. Too much gold. Blocking. Crazy. But, yeah, this is this is a crazy one. Honestly, yeah. the more I dug into it, I was like, holy cow. This yeah. is wow. nuts. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. That sounds crazy. I, I would honestly suggest cold podcast. Yes. Really. And that's honestly. here's what's funny is the, the Diesel Brothers, in their own video, reference the cold podcast. And yeah, so I was like, yeah. okay, I'll give it a listen. The dude is amazing. Oh, yeah. 100% spot on with his work. Like the way he tells the story and everything, like we're fun to listen to. He's factually accurate. <laughs> and he's not boring. Oh, like, no. He, we, not at all we. a paid endorsement. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, this is the game recognizes game. You know, I'm just saying. Right. Yeah, we're the Pee Wee. He's the big league. He's there got you go. the he's got those skills. He's got KSL backing. <laughs> that too. And Amazon. That, too. Yeah, yeah. It's a KSL podcast on out like yep. backed by Amazon. Amazon. Well, Amazon bought it out for the second season. Smart. When he did the second season, Amazon went to him and bought it out. Smart. So now they have exclusive rights to that series. Wow. But we so, we hope you guys enjoyed it. Yes. Again, like we know we're not perfect. We don't know everything. This this comes from about a week of research. Yeah. So it's just it's a way for us to present these things, these stories, um, and you know, just discuss it and like get our opinions, get our views, insights, and, and have fun. And if it interests you, have you can go research more into it yourself. Yeah, just yeah you don't have interested. to just listen to us. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there, there, Although there's we so do much. love you guys. We do. You only listen to us. <laughs> I, just I've, listen to us first. <laughs> I've listened to this cold podcast about a year ago, and then I re-listened to it this week. There's honestly so much that there is easy to get some things miskewed and yeah. to move around and well, stuff. And but, I, I will say, so my wife has actually listened to this podcast a long time ago, too. And it's because... Without giving too much away, she was in a previous relationship years and years and years ago. That was very bad, kind of like this one. And she was going, my wife was doing some counseling and stuff. And the, her counselor was like, go listen to this podcast. Because it can let you know if you were ever in a situation that is like this. Yes. Again, yes. we mentioned like if you are we ever in before. anything any kind of abusive relationship, there are people who are going to listen to you. Don't feel like you can't say anything because no one's going to listen. Say something, say, say it everywhere. Tell anyone you can at any time, listen to this podcast. It can open your eyes. It can help you see if you are trapped in what could be a deadly situation. Yes. Um, but there is help. There is hope. There's people. Yep. Please reach out for talk to someone you are worth getting out of that mm-hmm. yes. yeah that's i just can't even believe it's real man it's right crazy. that's the hardest thing is i hear these stories and like my brain c- just can't fathom it i can't understand we can't comprehend how someone yeah. can actually get to that spot yeah, yeah. <sighs> exactly. well 
We love you guys. Thanks for being here with us. Hope you sleep good tonight. (laughs) Hope you sleep well. Maybe go put on a cartoon real quick. Something fun. Or, you know, turn on one of our lighter hearted episodes. Exactly. There you go. That's perfect. Jump over to an Ask Men. (laughs) They're fun. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Unless you're related to us. If you know us really personally, do not listen to your podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Please, dear God, don't we listen. Love you guys. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being a part of this crowd. We'll see you next Let's time. Love you guys. Ciao. Bye.